Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday comes from the prophet Isaiah. We would like to reflect on the theme of the message and the way of peace for the mission of the church. Yes, all of us are sent by the Lord in the power of the Spirit to mission. But what is our message? Peace. And what is the way for our missionary proclamation? Also peace. Now, in the first reading, we find this beautiful vision coming from Isaiah of Israel. Israel as a mother. And this mother has a mission not only for her children, but a mission for the whole world. And the prophet Isaiah invites the children of Israel and those who love her to rejoice over her, to rejoice because of the good things that God will do to Israel and do to the world through Israel. If you look at the images used by the prophet Isaiah, we see the following as dominant. The mission of Israel is one of giving comfort, like a mother who comforts her children. Imagine that. The theme of salvation being presented to us through the comforting love that God extends to everyone through the loving mother, Israel. Then also, peace, peace. But how is peace depicted in the first reading? Normally, we think of peace as the absence of conflict, as the absence of animosity, as the absence of uh, contradictions. And we are basically right. We describe uh, a situation as peaceful when we can deal with one another in a pleasant way, in a harmonious way, when we don't have to worry about uh, little words or little actions that could be misconstrued and could lead to conflicts. While that is true, the way peace is depicted in the first reading goes beyond the absence of conflict. Remember, describing peace as the absence of conflict is a rather negative way of depicting peace. But positively, positively, how do we understand peace? The way the text describes peace or translates the word shalom is through prosperity. A moment of abundance. And this is not just of material goods. Prosperity, abundance here means the conditions of life that make human beings productive, that make them creative, that make them experience fullness of life. That is peace. Whenever an atmosphere exists for human beings to be able to fulfill their dreams and to make their potentials grow, there is peace. So dear brothers and sisters, the mission of Israel is presented to us in the first reading in terms of bringing peace to her children, bringing peace to the whole of humanity, making life possible, making life really prosperous, an abundant life. But this comes with the comfort, the consoling and compassionate love of God through Israel. Peace through compassion. Peace by making people fully alive. This is the mission of Israel, and this will be the mission of Jesus 
and of the new Israel. The Word of the Lord Our second reading for this Sunday comes from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. We are reflecting on peace, the message of peace and the way of peace in our mission, in our Christian mission. And the first reading depicts the mission of Israel as a mother giving comfort and peace to her children and to the whole world. And peace is depicted not just as the absence of conflict, but as more positively the offer of fullness of life, prosperity, and the conditions of living that make people fully creative. And this comes through the comforting love of God. Now, in the second reading, we find St. Paul saying that he boasts only of the cross of Christ the cross of Christ. For many, the cross of Christ, and for that matter, the cross of any human being, is a symbol of conflict. Why is someone crucified? Well, during the time of Christ, crucifixion is a punishment for known and established criminals. Those who have violated the law, those whose presence creates conflicts. And so to preserve the peace, they should be eliminated when their guilt is established. So the death of Christ on the cross, sociologically speaking, is a sign that he was a man of conflict, that he is not a man of peace. But St. Paul says that the cross of Christ brings peace. It is the source of peace, not only to the Jews, the people to whom Jesus belongs, but it is the source of peace to all. Now, St. Paul describes it this way. On the cross of Christ, the world has been crucified. And St. Paul also has been crucified no, to the world on the cross of Christ. Then St. Paul says it does not matter whether someone is circumcised or not. It doesn't matter whether someone belongs to this social group or not. You know, the world of the Jews and the environs was characterized by so much division such that people are classified, no, as we normally classify people, but the classification leads to conflicts. Now, St. Paul tells us that what matters now is not the barriers, the divisions created by the world. In fact, when you look at those divisions, they are the very source of conflict. What Jesus accomplished on the cross is peace. In his body that absorbed the sinfulness and the hatred of the world, we have become a new creation. This is the peace that Jesus brings. A new creation. A new way of living again. Where we are not beholden to the barriers and divisions dictated upon us by the world. For as long as you have faith in Christ, for as long as you are willing to be the new creation as children of God in Jesus Christ and in the power of the Spirit, then you can be at peace. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a new way of looking at peace accepting others as brothers and sisters, even those who do not belong to my group, to my ethnic identity, to my religious affiliation, to my economic uh, stratum. All of us 
have been interiorly recreated by Jesus Christ. And so there is a possibility now to live with each other as brothers and sisters. There will be peace. So we are again back to the basic insight. Peace is not just the absence of animosity. Peace is living, living fully. And here, in the second reading, living fully as neighbors, living fully as brothers and sisters. For all that have divided us have died on the cross of Christ. Our gospel passage for this Sunday comes from St. Luke. We have been reflecting on our mission, our mission of peace. Our message is peace, and our manner of doing mission should also be consistent to, with our message of peace. In the first reading from Isaiah, we see the city Jerusalem and the whole of Israel depicted as a mother whose mission is that of peace. Peace not only in terms of absence of conflict, but the offer of comfort, the offer of prosperity, the possibility for people to be productive, to live fully. And this comes from God. Now, in the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, we see the cross of Christ depicted as the source of peace. On the cross of Christ, Jesus has put to death all that divided humanity, all those factors that have prevented us from living fully as individual human beings and as communities, all the classifications that have led people to discrimination and disregard of each other. Now, all of this has died on the cross of Christ. And so there is a possibility for peace. There is a possibility for us to be one in Jesus Christ, not mindful of how our unique characters should lead to division. In the gospel, we find Jesus in his earthly life sending his disciples on mission. Of course, the first to be sent were the twelve. But in this passage, we see the sending or the missioning of the 72 disciples. The number 72 is quite symbolic for the Jewish people. It is a number that depicts the universal world. When you say 72, 70, or 72, it means the whole world. So the disciples, the 72 disciples, are meant to address the whole world, at least the known world at that time. So this depicts the universal mission of the church. What is the purpose of this mission? Let us go to the message that Jesus entrusted to the 72. Jesus says, Whenever you enter a house, you should say, Peace to this house. The message of the missioner of Christ is that of peace, shalom. Now, that is rephrased by another message. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. There is a close connection between the coming of the kingdom of God and the peace that is brought by the disciples of Christ. We are alerted by Jesus' instruction that our message is the peace that comes from the reign of God. The message of the missionary sent by Christ is not just any peace, 
but the peace that comes from the reign of God. We all know that governments and other kingdoms send emissaries. They also send soldiers. Normally, those who are sent by the kingdoms of this world, whoa, what do they bring? They bring weapons. They bring not only weapons that are lethal in terms of arms, armament, but they can bring their weapons like their influence, the weight of their money, so that in the bargaining table, those who have more influence can command the others. They can lord it over others. This is how kingdoms send their missionaries, bringing the pride, bringing the authority, and even the threats of their kingdoms. But Jesus sent his emissaries for another purpose, to invite people to receive the coming kingdom of God. And if they receive the kingdom of God, there will be peace. The peace that was already depicted in the first reading by Isaiah. Now it's the church, the loving mother, the new Jerusalem, that will be the comforting presence of God and will offer life, offer Jesus, who is life. And those who believe in Him will live fully the way St. Paul in the second reading depicted it. In Jesus, we are a new creation and we will find peace in our hearts and in our community. This is our message. So my dear brothers and sisters, when wherever you go, bring this message of peace. But the peace that comes from the kingdom of God and the cross of Christ. Do not bring peace that is measured by the kingdoms of this world. No, our peace is the peace that emanates from the weakness of love on the cross of Christ. Only that will give us life. Only that will recreate individuals and societies. But we have to pay attention to a second uh, element. It is not just the message of peace that the disciples must bring to other people. They must also take the way of peace. Sometimes, our message is of peace, but our manner is not that of peace. So Jesus reminds his disciples, you will be sent as lambs in the midst of wolves. So we are not supposed to be wolves. We are supposed to be lambs, gentle, comforting, just like Jesus, the Lamb of God. So, my friends, wherever you go, what are you like? Are you like a lamb or are you like a wolf? And then Jesus says, wherever you go, now eat whatever is presented to you. Now, this is very much uh, in line with the lesson that we got from the second reading. St. Paul says, what matters is our interior recreation in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter whether you are Gentile or Jew, and uh, you know many people do not eat this type of food because, oh, that's against my, my belief, my ethnic group. Now, Jesus sends his disciples as lambs among wolves, and whatever food they serve you, you eat. You don't complain. You don't say, well, in my group, no, to the group to which I belong, this food is forbidden. Be open to other people. If the food is good for them, then it might be good for you. The barrier is taken out. So, you see, the, the manner by which you bring the message of peace must be incarnate 
in your demeanor, in your attitudes, even in the little things like eating. So Jesus wants us to be consistent. The message of peace lived in a way of peace. And when we bring the peace of Christ according to His kingdom, and especially according to the love that He poured upon us on the cross, we will make people fully alive. We will be providing people with opportunities to recover their humanity. And new life will, will spring. New life for individuals, new life for communities. This is peace. Shalom. I've been engaging in a dialogue with peoples of other religions. I had an opportunity to have breakfast with some of our Muslim brothers who have been engaged in, in uh, NGO work, especially in education. And we discussed not only their projects, we ate together. And while eating, it's as though we were sharing one life. And for that brief moment, an hour of breakfast, you experience the dawning of a new humanity where all of us could live and share our goods and share goodwill. Then I had uh, another meal with our brothers and sisters of the, of the, among the Buddhists, a group from the Chinese, line and another group from Japan you know? and uh, again at that moment when you are all seeking for peace then you feel fully alive time flies you don't realize it's already more than an hour you did not feel you are wasting time you know that this is a, a, a begraced opportunity and then you as Christians are able to say Wow, the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes, the new Jerusalem, the comforting mother is here. And the cross of Christ has really recreated us. We can look at each other and say, yes, we are brothers and sisters. Peace to this house. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.